Welcome, boxing fans, to the Truth and Company Boxing Podcast. Tonight's guest is none other than the one and only, the man of many talents in the sport of boxing. And if you don't know him, you better do your research because you're not really a boxing fan. The one and only, John the Iceman Scully. How you doing, John? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. I appreciate you taking time to come on the show. I know it was last minute, um, but uh, hopefully we can uh, talk about some boxing that's coming up uh, starting tomorrow night through the weekend and uh, talk about what you've been going and uh, doing with your fighters. I just saw you on Facebook recently. You were at an event, so I know you had a lot of things going on this week. Right, right, right. Yeah, I've been uh, lucky. I've been keeping busy within within the game. And speaking of that, how many hats are you wearing right now? Well, I'm a, I'm a trainer. I'm a, I'm a, uh, I don't know what you call it. I'm a, a helper, I guess. I'm a. An advisor. Advisor, maybe. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, I, the main things I do now is, um, I, I, I train the guys. You know, you know, m- m- mainly, my main thing is training Arthur Betterbaev, being in his camp. Um, when he fights, I, I keep my schedule free. I'm always ready to go whenever he calls. Um, but I help out at a gym here, the Charter Oak Boxing Academy in Hartford. And uh, we have amateur kids that I work with. Um, but also, you know, I, I help I help uh, raise money for fighters in need. That's probably, uh, other than training with Arthur, that probably takes up the majority of my time in boxing. Yeah, let's talk about that for a minute because I completely forgot that you do that. I think that's a great thing, and uh, more people should be involved in it. Talk to me about the boxers that you do raise money for and how this whole program works. Okay, so there's a bunch. The 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 three that I talk about are ones that I'm not telling a secret. Everybody knows their situation, which is Gerald McClellan, Pritchard Colon, and um, Wilfred Benitez. Uh, there's other guys that were champions and known fighters, but I don't, I don't out, out them, so to speak, you know, they're not, they're not ready to, you know, let people know their situation, but, but I help them, <clears throat> excuse me. And, um, you know, it started kind of by accident, uh, several years ago, I believe it was Wilfred. I heard he needed something. He needed some money to do something. And, I had a, maybe it was a poster, maybe signed by, it might've been Roy Jones or something. And I I spent, I'll sell it online and see if I can help raise some money. I sold it easily, easily when I told people what it was for. And so I said, man, I got a whole bunch of stuff I'll sell, you know, and I'll raise money to help these guys. And then people started sending me stuff in the mail. I get, I get stuff all the time, you know, signed posters and pictures and all that kind of stuff. And so other fighters would get recommended to me and people would say, Hey, this guy, uh, former champ, you know, he's, he needs, he's in some trouble, you know, he needs some help. And, uh, so it just kind of became almost like a, like a hobby where I just raise money and send the money to these guys. And, uh, like, for example, the, the, probably the best thing that's happened so far, uh, I got these drawings of Mike Tyson recently um and uh i sent them to mike and he signed them to two people uh who paid good money for them and they received them in the mail from me i i got them back from mike and i sent them to them and uh so i just sent uh wilfred an initial payment of of a thousand dollars in one clip and i'll be sending him more money as we go uh so you know it's, it's been going pretty good. It's starting to catch on. I think a lot of people are starting to hear about it. So I actually saw some of the stuff that you were doing on Facebook, almost like a little bidding war. You you put up an item on right. Facebook. You talk about it. People, you start a bid or, or people start a bid, and then everybody kind of bids above each other underneath in the comment section. Right. And then well, at the fun. end. Uh, it's fun. You know what I mean? It's fun. Like I get the people, you know, I egg them on. You know, it's, I treat it like a fight. You know, like uh, two two guys are bidding, and I treat them like they're fighter. And I'm telling them, like, "Oh, don't take that, man. You know, you gotta you gotta fire back. You know, you can't let him outbid you by 
50 cents, you know, and, and so, so it's fun. You know, I think the people, I think the people who, who do it, I think they have fun with it. You know, it's kind of a fun thing and, and it results in a positive addition to, to the boxing game. So now is that the only place there on Facebook that, that you promote the stuff or, or can people find it somewhere else or can they bid on I, it somewhere else? Or? The main thing is always my Facebook, but I, I also put it on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, and if someone bids on there, then I do like a cross cross bidding auction. I'll tell the people like, hey, I got a guy on Instagram who's willing to beat you by $200. What are you going to do? And uh, so I, 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 neg- I navigate it that way. Okay, so basically anybody that's watching this podcast right now that's involved in the boxing community, boxer, trainer, promoter, matchmaker, anybody that's got any type of merchandise that they can sign to buy their fighters or themselves or whatever, contact contact John Scully on Facebook. Uh, he'll give you his, his email, his uh, address. You guys can hook up, send it to him so that he can get it in this auction, this bidding war on Facebook, and that so he can make more money for these guys and uh, send these guys some nice checks. Right. So and even, anybody even, out there? Well, let me say this too. Uh, to anyone that helps out in that that way, what I do is, if you have, say you had, say you hypothetically you had a glove signed by Muhammad Ali, I wouldn't have you send it to me. I would have you take a picture of it, and I would put the picture up, because uh, and then I would auction it off, and whoever wants, say somebody bid a thousand dollars, I would have them send me the money, and once I got the money then I would have you send them the glove to save money on postage. So you send it, and then when they get it, I would send you the money that you spent on the postage. And then when they get it, I send the money to Wilfred or Gerald or whoever needs it. Like, And it's helped out. Like I, I'll give you a perfect example. I just came back from Detroit a couple of days ago. We did a big event out there. I had Gerald McClellan come. He met his teammates. Tommy Hearns was there. He met these guys for the first time since his accident. Like, I think it was 28 years ago. Uh, so the way I got the money, it was about, I needed about $1,000 for him. And I went on my Facebook and I put something up to sell. But I also just told people, like, look, if you if you want to donate, if you want to help out, you know, now's the time. This is This is something we need. And literally within an hour, I had the $1,000. So can yeah. people, if people want to just donate money, can they just find a way to send you just money? Well, yeah, people do it all the time. But what I tell them, you know, not, like it's not everybody probably trusts me, you know, like, you know, I'm a stranger, <laughs> I'm, I'm a stranger to a lot of people. Uh, but if they don't want to send it to me, I'm just uh, shutting the door here. If they don't want to send it to me, I can, I can give them an address to send money to Gerald Wilfred. Benitez and Pritchard Cologne, I could give them the address and they could send it directly to them. Okay. You so know, basically any, anybody that wants to be involved in this somehow with items, money, whatever, contact John Scully on Facebook. He will break it all down to you. And then you guys can feel that you're being part of something and, and helping some of these boxers out that, that gave a lot and a lot for everybody in the ring. Right. So, I mean, even if it's a few dollars and it makes you feel good that, you know, John's going to take care of this and send it to these boxers because, you know, at the end of the day, we know how much these boxers put in the ring for us just to pay, you know, pennies to go watch these guys fight. Right. And some of these guys die in the ring or like you yeah. said, unfortunately, some of them get injured for the rest of their lives. Right. And, it's, and I'll tell you, like, I've had people just two days, three days ago in Detroit, an official Amateur box because the amateur boxing tournament is going on out there right now as we speak. An official came up to me, handed me a hundred dollar bill, and he's here. Just give this to whoever you want. And I'm like, oh well, who who do you want it to go to? And he's like, oh, I trust you. Just give it to whoever. And uh, you know, so people do stuff like that all the time with me. They just send money, and I sent I sent uh, Pritchard Cologne a check today for a hundred dollars. So that helps with. You know, whether they need money for groceries, you know, the bills. I mean, you know, they still have mortgages. Like The, the problem is the family members who, who take care of them, they can't work because these guys have to be looked after 24 hours a day. They cannot be left alone. So they can't work. You know, they're not they're not lazy. They just they can't leave the house. So bills still need to be paid. So 
you know, I'm trying to help make their lives a little bit easier. Yeah, and I actually, I mean, I was watching that fight live with Pritchard Cologne when, I mean, yeah. the, the the ref the ref should have did a lot more than he did. I mean, right. we could point fingers now, but I mean, that guy hit him in the back of the head. I mean, it had to be at least 10 times. Right, right, right. I was at the fight. It, as luck freak thing, I just, I happened to be at that fight. And uh, yeah, it was, a, you know, it was a crazy situation. Just crazy. All right, well, to change the subject a little bit, I want to pick your brain because we all know that you can break down fights and that you're a historian and you're kind of like the encyclopedia man of boxing. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to – hopefully you know all these names and uh, that the fights that are going on. Um, are you familiar with this new Pro Box TV that they've came up with online or on the apps? I, I literally just heard about it about two days ago. Somebody – mentioned it to me so i'm not 100 percent sure what it actually is okay so basically you can go online and you can pay your dollar 99 for a month and you can watch these fights that air usually every other wednesday or sometimes on the weekends they match up some a decent card and you're paying two dollars a month so you can't yeah. beat that i mean for two dollars to watch the whole card so um this Wednesday, tomorrow night, there's a there's a card. And are you familiar with this guy, uh, Mohammed Samoro? Is that his name? I know he's an up and comer. They've been talking quite a bit about him, and he's fighting Angel Vasquez. And he they're the main event tomorrow night on the Pro Box TV. Are you familiar with these? I, one I am. Guys? I am not familiar. No, I am not. Okay. All right. Well, then let's uh, let's check out Thursday's card, which is actually on ESPN Plus. Now, I'm probably going to say this guy's name wrong, but I know a lot of the commentators say it wrong, too. So uh, this Christian M. Billy. Oh, I, I know Christian very – it's funny you mention that. I, I know Christian very well, and I was just going to go online tonight and start talk, getting people to watch him because he's uh, – He's somebody to watch. You yeah, know, I've seen I've yeah. seen his last couple of fights, and that's why right. I wanted to. Is is that how you pronounce it, M. Billy? Uh, yeah, that's how I would say it, Christian and Billy. Okay, yep. and Billy. So now he's fighting Carlos Gangora, and yep. and M. Billy is twenty three and O, and Carlos Gangora is twenty one and one, and they're in the main event on ESPN Plus on Thursday night. So right. do you kind of? Well, you said you know him, so talk to me about him a little bit so the fans can figure out kind of what style he has and what he does in the ring. Listen, Christian is – He's a. let me just say this first. He's a great guy. He's such a nice kid. He's a – you know, he's got no attitude, no cockiness. He's a really good kid. He's a, He's always smiling. Good kid. He. Uh, but he fights. The longer it goes, the better it is. Like he, he just keeps coming and he's coming and he throws punches. And if you watch him fight, after a few rounds, you say to yourself, he's good, but there's no way he's going to keep up this pace. And round ever, he just keeps up the pace. And he keeps up the pace. And he goes to the very end. And he actually, uh, you know, his last couple fights, he's fought some good good competition. He beat Ronald Ellis uh, a few months ago. Ronald Ellis is a very good fighter. And, uh, you know, he just was on him. And and, and he's, he's really exciting. Uh I would highly recommend people watch him fight. He's he's very exciting, and like I say, the longer it goes, the better it goes, the better it is for him. He just loves to get in there and throw punches, and and he lets his hands go. You never have to worry about a lack of action with that guy. So, are you familiar with his opponent at all, Carlos Gangora? Not and not one? particularly. No, not particularly. Okay, but if anybody wants to see a good action fight, though, this yeah. is uh this is a good way to start the weekend Thursday night, the main event on ESPN Plus. Yeah, no, and, I, uh, I highly recommend that fight. I highly recommend it. Okay, all right, so let's jump to uh, Saturday. There's actually two different cards on Saturday. If people aren't aware of this, there's a pay per view card on Showtime, and uh, if you can't afford to do the pay per view, then go on ESPN or the Sky Sports, and there's a main event on there. Um, are you familiar? Well, obviously, you know who Richard Comey is. Yeah. He's he's in the main event on there against uh, Jose Carlos Ramirez. Are you familiar with him, 27-1? and one? Not particularly. There's, you know, it's crazy. There's so many guys out there to keep track of these days, you know? But, I mean, Richard Comey you're familiar yeah. with, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, And yeah. He, always, he always puts on a good show. He comes to fight. He's a boxer. Yeah. 
So, right. I mean, he's, and he's actually 30 wins, four losses, and one draw right now. And uh, he's trying to make a comeback. I mean, I hate to say that like that, but, you know, a couple right. fights ago, he got knocked out clean. I mean, yeah. he was done. So, yeah, he's trying to make another run. So uh, that's the main event on that channel. And then, obviously, the big pay-per-view, everybody's been watching it. Everybody knows about it. These guys legitimately do not like each other. And I understand that Caleb Plant started this a long time ago, um, apparently based on David uh, Benavides' statement. He says Caleb started it one time. They were in a gym or something, and there was a few words exchanged. And then Caleb Plant went on some interviews and started talking trash, saying that, you know, he's nobody and he's all this and he's all that. And that kind of rubbed uh, David Benavides the wrong way. So eventually this fight is going to happen Saturday night. They don't like each other. Caleb Plant, 22 and 1, 13 knockouts. David Benavides, 26 and 0 with 23 knockouts. Now I know you know both of these guys, right? All right, of course. So give me a breakdown of uh, of what you see happening in this fight. Because they, they legitimately do not like each other. So let me ask you this because I know you were a fighter. Can emotions get to one of these guys in this fight and make them not fight as good as they would normally fight? I mean, it could, but I think in most cases like this, even though beforehand everybody's, you know, talking about what a crazy fight it's going to be. And, you know, at that level, these guys know how to control themselves and they know how to fight the right fight. And I think, uh, I think it's, I think it's going to be a good fight. I see a lot of people saying that they just think, uh, you know, Benavides is just going to kill him, just going to walk right through him. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't really, you know, if, if Caleb is on his game, you know, he's a good boxer. He, he knows how to box. He knows how to use the ring. He's slick. Um, you know, it's not, it, it shouldn't be an easy fight. If, if he beat Caleb easily, I'd be, I'd be impressed and I would be surprised. Yeah. But I mean, see, and like you said, a lot of people are talking that Benavides is just going to walk through him. And I don't know why, because Caleb Plant basically was doing great against Canelo Alvarez. Yeah. I mean, Caleb until- is good. You know, people tend to, like, you see a guy come out and he's he's a monster, right? So, in their mind, he can do that with everybody. Like, he can just destroy everybody, walk through everybody. And, uh, you know, there's levels to it. And Caleb, Caleb is a good fighter. Caleb knows how to box. He knows how to neutralize things. He's got good technique. You know, his, his performance against Durrell and the way he, you know, the finishing punches, I mean, that was beautiful. I mean, that's that's high-level uh competition right there so um and that was another guy that he did not like that they really did not like each other right 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 yeah and and but you know but he didn't go crazy he didn't he didn't you know he he was a professional and uh and benavides is is as well and and what's amazing about benavides is funny because i always say especially when you go to tournaments and you go to you know little kids are there young 12 years old 13 and you see a kid and no matter what he looks like or whatever, you just never know who he's going to be, you know, years from now, right? And I remember, I don't know if you remember Bones Adams, but Bones yep. Adams was a, you know, good, good champion. Bones could really fight. I met Bones at the Ohio State Fair when he was 13 years old and I was 19. And we got to be friends, you know, we hung out the whole week. And, and I had, I remember specifically, I had 49 fights at that time. I was 19 years old. He had 113 and he was 13 years old. You know, he was super experienced, super good. And, you know, years later, he was, he was a very good world champion, very skilled. So Benavides, when he was a kid, you see these videos, it is what it is. He was just a fat kid. You know, he's a fat 13 year old, 14 year old (laughs) kid. And, you know, you'd look at him, you say, nobody would say, Oh, one day this guy's going to be a beast, super middleweight champion. You know, you wouldn't, you just wouldn't think that, but he, uh, you know, he did his thing and, and he is where he is now. Uh, it's a good fight. I think, I think it's good for boxing, no matter who wins. If either guy wins, it's going to be good. We're going to have a good champion. We're going to have a guy who can draw interest for different reasons. So, uh, it's a, it's a good fight for boxing, no matter who wins, it's, it's going to be great. So let me ask you something though. If Caleb Plant gets knocked out, where does he go after that? I mean, what does he do? Well, you know, he's going to, if, if that happens, then he's going to have to climb back up 
probably a couple fights, regular fights, and then he's going to have to get thrown in with someone that he probably wouldn't be the favorite against. Uh, you know what I mean? So he's going to, he would, it, it's going to be, it would be a tough road back. Um, but he's, you know, once you're at that level and you have that kind of name, as long as he doesn't get blown out here, uh, you know, he's going to still be in the mix. Even if he loses, he's still going to be in the mix. He's still Caleb Plant. He's still going to get get opportunities. So if Benavides wins, does he get his shot against Canelo? Well, you know, it's 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 a crazy thing. Like, I think, you know, Arthur's in the mix with Canelo. You know, that's that's a fight that's talked about. Arthur better buy it. That's a fight that's been talked about. So no, that would be a light heavyweight, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And but it's definitely, you know, possibility. So right now, Canelo has still, even though he lost to to Bavol, but to Bavol, he still has, he's in the driver's seat for the most part. You know, he can he can dictate a lot of things. Um, so I don't know, I don't know if he would want to fight Benavides uh, at that point. You know, because he's got. He's got Bavol, he's got Arthur, I mean, and uh, and Canelo, especially. I don't think he would risk that. Um, so that's where the boxing business comes in, which which I know enough about, but I'm not really, I'm not a fan of the business. I don't, you know, I, it's, it's funny, even though I'm in the game, I don't even know what guys make. I never read the articles about purse bids and promotions. I don't know who promotes who. Arthur's the only guy who I know who his promoter is, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm not really a business guy in that regard. So let, let's talk about your guy for a minute then. So yeah. if he, if he gets the fight with Canelo, that's going to have to be a light heavyweight, but yeah. so why not? Okay. What, what's going on with triple G? Is he just on the bench now? Why not fight somebody like triple G? I mean, I would think, you know, because well, triple G was a small, a uh, very small super middleweight. You know, he was he's not an imposing guy by any stretch. So he couldn't fight anybody now. You know, nobody would pay to see him against Canelo after the last fight. They've already fought three times. So what, after what, about, what about Triple G versus Benavides? Yeah, I mean if if, if Benavides wins and uh yeah I think people would be interested in that. I think that could be a, a sellable fight for sure. Yeah. Okay, so if your guy doesn't get, if Arthur doesn't get the Canelo fight, then where do you guys go? I've heard uh, going to England, maybe to fight Callum Smith. That's, Ooh, that's that, an interesting fight. Yeah, that's what I've been hearing. That's what I think. Good, good chance that that would be the next fight. But again, I, I'm the type. I don't, I don't have anything to do with negotiations, business. I just, I sit by the phone. I wait for them to call me, and 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 basically. I don't even bother them with it. So I know what you know. Like I know what, what you, whatever you've read on the internet, that's, you know, people would think that I have the inside track, but I really don't bother Mark or any of those guys, you know, cause I know everybody's by. So I just wait like everybody else to see what's going to happen. Okay. Well, look, I'm going to wrap this up with one more fight and that's April 22nd. I'm going to jump to that one. It's the big one. Everybody's talking about. I just kind of want to get your prediction on it. I know you've probably been around both guys, or at least, you know, at least one of them. The Javante Davis, Ryan Garcia fight, what's your opinion? Well, I uh, I think I think a lot of people think automatically that Tank Davis knocks him out, right? Which very well could happen. But behind all the you know, YouTube and the uh, good looking and all that kind of stuff. You know, I, I really do think Ryan Garcia can fight. You know, I think he's good. I think he hits hard. I think he's got a lot to lose and he knows that. I think it's going to be a very good fight. The best I can say is if I had to bet, I would go with my, my brain and I would say, okay, Javante, you know, it's his time. He's going to win. But I wouldn't bet a lot of money on it. I wouldn't be that confident. If Garcia wins, if Garcia wins by knockout, I would not be surprised. It would not it would not shock me at all. I think he's about the most live underdog you could be. Okay. So it, it's definitely in your opinion it's going to be an interesting fight. Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Gar if, if Tank 
you know, I don't see him walking through Garcia, right? I think he's going to have to be on his, on his game the whole time. Now, boxing's a crazy game. Tank could go out there and wipe this guy out, just catch him clean in the first round. But if Tank goes down early, I will not I will not be – I'm going on record. I will not be surprised at all. I think Garcia is a good fighter. I think he's got a lot to lose. I think he can he can fight better than people think he can because, like I said, I think – I think the idea is that he's a flash in the pan. He's a good-looking kid. He's like a De La Hoya wannabe. That you know, all that kind of stuff. I think he's good. I think I think he can fight. I think I think if he catches Tank, you know, with with some solid shots, I think he can do some real damage as well. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he wins. If I had to press and bet five dollars, I, I would bet on Tank, but I wouldn't bet a hundred. I'd bet 10, I'd bet five, but I wouldn't bet 100. <laughs> All right, well, listen, um, Iceman, I appreciate you taking time. Come on here, talk about some of the fights that are coming up this weekend on a, and on April 22nd, the big one, and uh, talking about what you're doing for all the fighters that are retired and injured and things like that. And I hope some people are going to contact you on Facebook and hopefully they, they watch this after uh, – it's live right now. They watch it after it's recorded, and uh, people will continue to contact you and help them guys out. Because, like I said, at the end of the day, man, those guys were putting their lives on the line for us just for a few dollars so we could watch them in the ring, and uh, maybe it's yeah. time we give back. 100%. It would Believe me, I talk to the families all the time. They would be more than excited to receive anything, like any relief that they can get. They are super appreciative of I can guarantee you that. Well, thanks again, John, and I'll talk to you later. All and right, the my truth, man. And you. the truth has spoken. Have a good night, man. All right, Peace bro. Out. Yes, sir.